Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about health care topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Hello and welcome. Today's presentation, Medicare Open Enrollment. What you need to know is presented by Christy Caracappa, Washington Hospital's Health Insurance Information Service Coordinator. Without further ado, please welcome Christy Caracappa. Good morning. I'm Christy Caracappa, Health Insurance Information Service Coordinator here at Washington Hospital. Thank you for joining us today for this Medicare presentation. I hope you're all staying well and safe. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, you'll be able to ask questions at the end of this presentation. If you're watching on another format, you can call me directly, uh, email questions, or schedule an appointment after this presentation. I will be providing my contact information. So let's move ahead here and talk a little bit about the health insurance information service that's provided here at Washington Hospital. It's a free, free and unbiased service uh, here for the community to answer questions about health insurance, how to find physicians or medical centers that are in your network. I'm available all year to answer any questions you have about Medicare, private insurance, employer insurance, or government programs. Also available in the HIS department are advanced health directives and POLST forms. So our objectives today are to provide an understanding about Medicare open enrollment and to provide information to those who are new to Medicare or are going to be eligible the next year. Sorry, my, I'm fogging up a little bit with my mask. All right, so a lot of you may be tuning in today due to open enrollment and changes that may be coming out with Medicare. So open enrollment for Medicare Part D and Advantage plans um, is October 15th through December 7th. So just next week will be your opportunity to make any changes to either one of your plans. So what should you be looking at during open enrollment? First of all, if you have Medicare with a Medigap, and a Part D drug plan, what you're going to be looking at during open enrollment is your Part D prescription drug plan. So what do you want to look uh, for? Have you had any changes in your medication this year? Does the plan you have now still cover all your medications? You might have had new medications or perhaps your plan might be dropping medications. Is there any new uh, plan that could save you money? Oftentimes people will say, Christy, my plan is working really well for me, but what they don't know is that there might be another plan that came up. Oftentimes, people keep the same plan, and others will change their plan to save money every year. So if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, in our area, in, the, in Alameda County, there are several Advantage plans. Recently, in the last couple of years, um, they've come out with more and more Advantage plans. Every year, the Advantage plans can change what they charge for services. They could charge, uh, change the premiums, and they could change the coverage. So what you want to look at in your Advantage plan is, does it still cover all of your medications? You want to take a look if the premium is changing, and if the co-pays or co-insurances are different. And are there any other change in coverage within the plan? You want to make sure that your doctor is still in that network and that your, your group that you're in is still um, under the Advantage plan that you have. Um, employer retirement plans. So you might be somebody who has CalPERS, which is very, obviously, very popular in California. You might come from a, a company, a large company that offers an employer retirement plan. So you might have Medicare with the employee retirement plan. If that is the case, you need to check with your plan through the employer to see when their open enrollment date is. Sometimes it is different. Now we're going to go back a little bit to, for those who are here to see about, uh, they're new to Medicare. Maybe perhaps this year, um, next year you're going to be 65 and you want to start thinking about what you need to do. 
So when do you sign up for Medicare? Uh, there's three different enrollment times. When you're first eligible for Medicare, there's a special enrollment period, and then there is the general enrollment period between January 1st and March 31st. So let's see what may apply to you. If you're going to be turning 65 and you are eligible for Medicare, you can sign up during a seven month period that begins three months before that you turn 65. It also includes the month that you turn 65 and then three months after. Special enrollment periods. This is a little uh, what I get the most questions about. Let's say you're turning 65 but you're gonna continue to work and you're covered under a group plan or you're turning 65 and maybe you're retired but your spouse is is still working and you're covered under your spouse's group plan. You do not have to sign up for Medicare Part B and there would be no penalty. You can sign up for Part B at a later time. So when you would want to do that, I always recommend you sign up for Part A. It, it's, it's typically free and it's owed to you if you've worked your 40 quarters, so sign up for it. That way, when you're off of the group plan, you could then um, go ahead and sign up for your Part B, and it's very seamless to do that. So when can you do that? You can do it anytime you're still covered by a group health plan, during the eight-month period that begins after your employment ends. So if your employment ends and you're losing your group health coverage, you have eight months to sign up for your Part B. I don't recommend that you wait because then you'll be without coverage. Um, the other is, uh, oh, if you have COBRA or a VA benefit, those plans aren't considered eligible for uh, special enrollment. So if you have COBRA and perhaps an, employ an employer is paying for your COBRA if you've lost your job, um, if that occurs, you want to go ahead and start on, um, on your Medicare. General enrollment. This is for people who missed, um, missed their uh, initial enrollment period when they turned 65 or they lost coverage. Um, if they lost coverage, I'm sorry, if they lost, lost their coverage uh, and they didn't sign up for B when they were supposed to. So they missed all their other opportunities. They can sign up during the general enrollment time, which is between January 1st and March 31st of each year. The problem with that is if you lost your coverage in June and didn't sign up for Part B, if you have to wait for that period of time, you'll be almost a year, or actually a year, without any coverage. So this is a way for you to get back into Medicare, but I, again, I don't recommend that you wait for that. Also, if you don't sign up for Part B when you uh, are initially um, uh, allowed to sign up for it, or when your enrollment period is, you will face a late enrollment uh, premium. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Part B cost. As of last night, uh, they're still showing the 2020 pricing. So that these may change. I could not find any word on exactly what it's going to be, but it should these should be fairly close. So basically, if you are um, file an individual tax return and make eighty-seven thousand dollars or less, your premium will be one hundred and forty-four dollars and 60 cents. If you're filing jointly it's, uh, and your income is 174 or less, your, also your premium be 144. As your income increases, your uh, premium will also increase. Sometimes you might start out at the lower cost and then if you do something during the year, like if you sell a property, um, you somehow have more income, uh, you know, a bunch of income based on cashing something out, that will raise your Part B costs for two years, and then it will revert back when your income lowers. Just wanted you to take a look at a Medicare card if you haven't seen one, if you're not 65 yet. Here we have the, um, oh my, there's my cursor. Uh, here's your Medicare number. They changed a couple years ago from your Social Security number to a series of numbers and letters. It shows here your Medicare Part A and Part B and the dates that you enrolled. If you have Medicare, you always want to keep this card with you um, unless you have an Advantage plan, but we'll talk more about that later. So the different parts of Medicare. 
this is where people sometimes get a little confused. There's several parts and they, they work independently of each other and sometimes they need to work together. So Medicare A and B are the basics of Medicare. Medicare Part A is your hospital coverage and B is your medical coverage. Those are what are on your card. Hospital coverage is basically if you are admitted to the hospital. When you're admitted to the hospital, that's your Part A coverage. It doesn't cover other things that happen while you're in the hospital. It's basically the building that you're in and any hospital charges. Part B is medical insurance. Med Part B follows you into the hospital when your doctor comes to visit you. If you have any imaging, medicine that you might receive while you're there, prescription medications you might receive while you're there. If you're having surgery or imaging, uh, your anesthesiologist in the imaging would also be Part B. Part B is also when you're out of the hospital. So if you're in the emergency room, you're not admitted, that's Part B. When you go to see your physician, have any lab work or imaging done, that's Part B. Okay. Then we have, I'm going to skip on down to Part D. Part D is your prescription drug coverage. Your prescription drug coverage is, of course, anything that's prescribed by your doctor and you pick up at a pharmacy. That you, are, that you are administering yourself. So back up to Medicare Part C, Medicare Advantage plans, we're gonna go over those plans and how they work. But basically, if you sign up for a Medicare Part C Advantage plan, you're signing your Medicare A and B over to that Advantage plan. You still have your Medicare coverage. Medicare tells the Medicare Advantage plan, we're gonna go ahead and pay you to take care of this individual. If you have questions about your bills, your coverage, you would contact the Advantage plan. If you were to contact Medicare about that, they would send you back to your Advantage plan. Okay. It also groups in your Part D. So those who are on an Advantage plan have their Medicare A, B, and D all inclusive in one package, generally. Okay. So let's talk about your Medicare options. Whether you're new to Medicare or you're, it's during an open enrollment period, you can still make changes. Um, Medicare, op Medica your Medicare options are either Original Medicare or a Medicare Advantage plan. Let's start with Original Medicare. With Original Medicare, you have your Medicare card, your A and B. You're also gonna wanna get a Medicare supplement plan that picks up the extra cost to Medicare. As you probably know, Medicare Part B is 80%, and then there's a 20% coinsurance that you're left responsible for. So that Medigap covers that additional 20%. Also, you'll want to pick up an individual Part D plan. So with the original Medicare, you're going to have three cards. You can have your Medicare card, you're going to have a drug prescription drug card, and then you're going to have a Medigap. So let's move forward and talk a little bit about Medigaps. So what a Medigap is, it's a supplemental insurance that fills the gaps of coverage in Medicare. Those gaps of coverage are deductibles, and coinsurance, okay? Medigap plans are sold by private insurance companies and are lettered A through N with a few letters missing in between. And no matter who you purchase the plan from, the coverage is going to be the same. So plan N with United Healthcare, with HealthNet, with Mutual of Omaha, is gonna be all the same coverage. It's just different pricing. I usually recommend that you go through a broker to get the, a broker that represents multiple companies so that you could get a good pricing so you don't have to go through the internet and accidentally give your name to somebody who is going to send you a lot of emails and phone calls for days and months to come. So, um, so there's not a traditional open enrollment period for Medigaps. You usually make changes during your birth month. With the Medigaps, when you first turn 65, that's the only time, or I'm sorry, when you first turn 65 or you have, uh, tr uh, transferred over from a group plan to Medicare. Those are the only times that Medigaps have to let you in without any uh, screening. So it's important for you to know at your entry into Medicare if this is, if this is what you want to do. So Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans, as they're called, this is a chart of what they look like, A through N. I have arrows set up here with plan F, G, and N. Those are the three top plans that are sold in this area and that are, the, I would say, the best or most comprehensive, comprehensive coverage. Although, 
Plan F is you are is no longer um, on the market to purchase unless you turn 65 before 2020. So if you are 65 now, and or you turn 65 before 2020, but you're still under a group plan and you're not planning on retiring for a couple of years, you'll still be able to purchase Plan F if you turn 65 prior to 2020. Anybody new to Medicare would have the highest plan that you could get is Plan G. As you can see, G is very similar to F, except for the Part B deductible. Part B deductible right now is $198 a year. So once you've met that deductible, then the re all your other services are covered. With original Medicare and a Medigap and a drug plan, you can go anywhere in the United States that takes Medicare will also take your Medigap. So for example, if you are here in California and you have your doctors in your hospital, but you're traveling to, um, to the East Coast and something happens, you can, uh, any, any place that takes Medicare will take your, your supplement. It follows you wherever you go. When you call a doctor, you call a facility to say, do you take my insurance? All you need to tell them is that you have Medicare and then your supplement will follow along behind. The Medigap and original Medicare offer you a entire country of um, access to healthcare. So it is, it's one that I usually prefer um, because, because of that fact. Especially living in the Bay Area, we have so many uh, great healthcare organizations and, and options. So that's um, how the Medigaps work. So Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage. You have your original Medicare, then you've purchased your Medigap. Now you need to have something that covers your prescription medications. Let me tell you a little bit about Part D and a penalty. If you don't get Part D when you first um, enroll in Medicare, and then you decide you wanna pick it up later, you'll have to wait till open enrollment, which is the October 15th uh, through December 7th time. So you could go a period of time without coverage, but you will also face a penalty. The penalty is not as big as the Part B penalty, but it is significant and it stays with you during your duration of Medicare. So it's something to consider. The plans are, can be as low as $11 and as high as $170. So if you're not taking any medication, you still might want to get a lower plan just to cover you just in case and to avoid that penalty down the road. So there are several plans offered by private insurance companies and they're approved by Medicare. Depending on your coverage, uh, you would pay a monthly premium and sometimes a copayment, depending on the plan or the pharmacy. So there, this is a new program for diabetics. It's called the Senior Savings Model. I've, I've had an opportunity to take a look at it on Medicare. I'm gonna have to give the Medicare website some kudos. They did a really good job making a lot of changes this year. They, um, you, could, you could find, a, it really will walk you through the different steps of Medicare. It gives you a, a pop-up option to say, if you enter your insulin, it'll say, do you wanna look at plans that are in the senior savings model, and it'll show you the plans. And basically how it works is it takes away the gap in coverage. So if you're paying $35 copay for your insulin, that $35 will carry you throughout the year. What I also found is that some of these plans, the, the medication, even though it carries you through the year, the cost might be a little high. So you still wanna reevaluate your plan, and you may wanna do this with yourself on the, on the Medicare website, I can help you or you can go to a insurance broker who can also help you with this. So if, I already talked about this, about the uh, Part D uh, coverage. If you don't get it when you're first eligible to get it and you decide to take it later, there is a um, penalty. Okay, now we're gonna go into choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. So you can find the Advantage plans on the Medicare website. Also on the Medicare website are, is where, are where you find the uh, Part D drug plans. And we're gonna show you that in a minute as well. So your Medicare options, again, we're gonna be looking um, at the Medicare Advantage uh, plans here. So how they work is you have your A and B, just like you pay for it over here. So you're gonna have your Part B, let's say you're paying 144. Then, um, 
most plans already include your Part D. And then some plans include lower out of uh, cost and extra benefits, lower cost uh, products and extra benefits. So the difference between, sorry, I'm going to back up here. The difference between the two plans, your original Medicare, again, you're going to have the three cards. You're going to have your Medicare, which I like to say you're the driver of your Medicare. Your Medicare is, is where you're going to choose to go. Your Part D is your drug plan, and then you have your supplemental coverage. The Medicare Advantage plan is typically you're going to have to stay within a network. So here in the Bay Area, there's actually hmm, I, I bet maybe like 14 plans this year. Uh, about five years ago, there were only three plans. So there's 14 plans this year. Not all the plans work everywhere. So there are plans that only work with Stanford. There's a Kaiser plan that obviously just works with Kaiser. Then there's other United Health plan, United Healthcare, um, Canopy, HealthNet. There's a Aetna. So when you're looking at those plans, they all have different pricing. The one thing that they have in common is they have to cover at least what Medicare covers. So what you're looking at is what is that extra 20%? Are they charging you that 20% or are they charging you a copay? You want to look at your in-hospital benefit. Are they, what is your copays per day in the hospital when you go with an Advantage plan? If you're on original Medicare with a Medigap and you have a plan, um, plan F, G, or N, if you were to go to the hospital, if you've met your deductible, you're covered 100%. With the Medicare Advantage plans, there's typically a, co uh, a copay that you pay per day up to six days in the hospital. But they also do have a maximum limit that you pay for the year. So there's quite a bit you need to look at when you're looking at the Advantage plans. Are they good? Yes, they are good. And sometimes it's easier for people to navigate the Advantage plan because it brings your network down to you know, individual choices. Or I'm sorry, not individual choices. It, it brings you down to more of a, an area of choices. Um, and they typically stay within groups. So I like to talk about Kaiser because they're a big, um, uh, a big uh, Advantage plan in our area. So if you're with Kaiser, there's Kaisers all over the Bay Area, all over California. So you can move around within the Kaiser plans. The other plans are like Hills Physicians. There's, Hills Physicians is very wide all over, um, all over the Bay Area. And also, uh, the other one is Palo Alto Medical Foundation. That's the other group. So you just have to stay within your group. Let's move on to the more things that you need to know about your Advantage plan. So these plans are offered by private insurance companies who are approved by Medicare. You no longer use your Medicare card. You receive a card from your Advantage plan. So you want to keep that card. You're still paying for your Medicare. You just, put it in, you just won't need to show it. So put it away in a safe place. So they have to cover all services that, are, uh, that original Medicare covers except hospice care because plan a, uh, Part A covers that. The MA plans, uh, they might offer extra coverage, such as vision or dental, sometimes for an additional cost. And each Medicare Advantage plan can change out-of-pocket costs and have different rules on how you get services. And these rules and premium changes can change every year. That's why it's important for you to review your Medicare Advantage plan every year. So um, questions to ask when you choose an Advantage plan. So if you're choosing an Advantage plan, you're new to Medicare or Things are just changing. You want to know what groups are included in the plan. You want to ask your doctor if they're in the plan, and if they are, what group are they affiliated with? What hospitals are in the plan? And does it cover your prescription medications? What are the co-pays and co-insurance? And what are the out-of-pocket maximums? So if you want to make if you are new to an Advantage plan, and you make a change during the open enrollment period, once you get the packet and you start talking to your doctors, if you find that this, this Advantage plan isn't going to work for you, then you have December 31st uh, of 2020, you have from January uh, 1st to March 31st of 21 to switch back to original Medicare and get a Part D plan. So if you make a choice that you're not happy with, you could change it during those three months. Also, if there's a five-star plan available, uh, you can jump on one of those any time during the year after you've made the change. The star ratings weren't out as of last night, so I can't tell you what those are yet. 
real quick, I want to go to the Medicare.gov website. Okay, so this is your Medicare.gov website. We have a, they always have a happy couple showing. Everybody's always happy with their Medicare. Um, here it shows that to preview your 2021 health and drug plans. I'm going to continue without logging in, but you actually should set up a Medicare.gov account. You can't set the account up till you have your Medicare number, but I re highly recommend that you sign up a Medicare.gov account. This will keep other people from trying to uh, set up a, a false account for you. Also, I'm going to throw this in there. If you do not have a Social Security.gov account, you should also work on getting that too, no matter how old you are. The Social Security.gov account is tied to Medicare. So if you lose your Medicare card, if you lose your Social Security card, or if you need to make any changes to your Social Security address or banking information if you are doing direct deposit, you'll be able to do that easily and quickly through the Social Security.gov website. Also, it will also help prevent fraud. If you sign up your account, then somebody else hopefully won't be able to um, intervene on that and sign one up for you. Okay, so um, the Medicare website has a few questions here. What do we want to look at if we want to look at the 2021 plans? If I, I'm going to just put in the Medicare Advantage plans right now. The drug plans, there's 34 different plans. The Advantage plans, we're just going to put Medicare Advantage plan, um, and we're just going to enter the zip code. We're just going to make it simple. You could enter, click on any of those, but I played with this a little bit yesterday, and it doesn't really take you um, anywhere that you need to be, <laughs> but you can play with it. You can't hurt it. Um, as long as you never click enroll while you're in the site, you're fine. So, um, and we do want to see drug costs. I'm not going to enter them. Let's see. We're going to see plans without drug costs. Okay. I just want you to have um, an understanding of how you could go in here and look at the different uh, health plans. So right here we have Health Net Green HMO. It has zero uh, a zero premium. So basically all you're paying for is um, is Medicare Part B, and uh, that's it. So. With that, it has a $3,400 in-network maximum pay for the year. So that sounds too good to be true. That's a, a plan that is going to cover you. But I'm not going to go into the plan details um, because it would take way too long. But that's where you want to look at the plan details. Look at the, what you want to look at are what are the, um, what are the co-payments? What are the uh, co-insurance? Really important, do your doctors take this plan? and what groups are they in. So oftentimes these plans will come into this area, but you're very limited on where you could go for services. But I do want you to know, any plan you, you choose, even if your services are minimal, your emergency services are always covered. So if you have a life-threatening emergency and you're taken to the nearest emergency room, you will be covered. You don't have to worry about that. Oftentimes people worry about, well, if I pick this and I have something happen where I'm taken to uh, the hospital, will I be covered? Yes, that is always covered. All right, so these are basically how the plans work. As you saw in there, you could also go back and look at the Part D, um, the Part D drug plans through there. Let's see if, oh, I got back. Okay, Medicare website. All right, so also talking about medications. Medi some medications are covered under Part B. For example, if you're picking up your medications at home through the pharmacy, and, uh, you, but you're admitted to the hospital. Oops, I'm sorry, I lost my, lost my microphone. If you're admitted to the hospital, those medications that you're taking at home are now going to be covered under Part B while you're inpatient. Other things that are covered under R Part B are drugs that are uh, used with durable medical equipment, such as insulin used in an insulin pump. Also, um, nebulizers. If you're picking up um, medicines that go into a nebulizer, those are also covered under Part B. It's real important for you to know that because when you go to the pharmacy, they may bill your Part D, and it might not be covered as well. If you have a Medicare 
um, a straight Medicare with a supplement, your chances are your insulin will be free if it's put into an insulin pump, okay? Also, injectable osteoporosis drugs, injectable and infused drugs, infused drugs such as uh, chemotherapy, those are covered under Part B. Often people will call me and say, I'm going to be undergoing chemotherapy, will my Part D cover it? No, it's covered under your Part B. Unless you have an Advantage plan, you would need to check with that plan to see how infused medicines are covered. They have to at least cover them up to 80%. You want to find out how is that extra 20 being covered. Is it being covered under a co-payment or co-insurance? And sometimes it's free. So also oral end stage renal disease drugs and enteral nutrition. Those are also covered under Part B. Extra help. So some people might meet certain uh, income and resource limits uh, that they qualify for extra help. Extra help in California is typically Medi-Cal. So if you are having difficulties paying for your prescriptions or difficulty paying for your Part B, and you feel that you have a, a lower than average income, you can check with Medicare or Social Security to see if you qualify for extra help. Oftentimes, so, uh, Social Security is aware of how much money you make, and they may send you a form that says you qualify for extra help. You may not think you qualify for it, but if they sent it to you, I highly recommend that you just go ahead, fill it out, and send it back, and see if you do qualify for any certain programs. Also right now, we have to be careful of scams. We're all getting, the robocalls are back. They were gone for a while, but they're back. Just before we started, we all got one from another state. But anyway, you need to be really aware of, um, especially for seniors, getting those phone calls, you'll get actually knocks at the door. And you need to be aware of what's going on. So health insurance companies have to be licensed with the state of California. Before you purchase anything, ask to have information sent to you on the plan details. If you're looking on the Medicare website, you're okay. But make sure you're in Medicare.gov and not another website. Don't give out your Medicare number or Social Security number if anybody calls you. If they claim they're from Medicare or Social Security, or if they're even claiming that they're calling from your insurance company, don't give them that information. That, that never happens. Um, and be aware of phone calls, of course, and mailings that you didn't initiate. So here's my information uh, with the Health Insurance Information Service. I'm the only one in this department, so I'm the only one that's going to be picking up your phone calls. Um, during open enrollment, uh, I do have a high volume of calls, and my appointments will start next week. So I have a very difficult time getting, getting back to you in a timely manner right now. It'll take about 48 hours to get back to you. You could also email me questions or if you'd like an appointment. I am taking appointments during this time, and um, I'd, be hap I'd be happy to help you. Thank you, Christy. We do have a few questions that came through. Well, the first question is, each year I help my mom with her open enrollment, but I moved out of state before the pandemic. Are you offering virtual appointments or by phone? Um, and so can I join? Okay, so I am not offering virtual appointments, um, but I am doing telephone appointments. I'm actually taking telephone appointments on, appointments on Mondays and Fridays um, during open enrollment, and I'm seeing people in person Tuesday through Thursday in, a, um, in the old health resource library, and, uh, and it's a very, so it's a very large area, and you will have your own monitor and will be well over six feet away wearing masks, You've been very helpful every year helping my parents going through it with the open enrollment. Are you allowing other than the clients attend these appointments? Yes. So oftentimes I will have um, my Medicare recipients bring a family member uh, to assist them um, in making these decisions. Oftentimes the family member may be the one who is picking up the prescription for the, um, for the client. So they like to have a say in where, what pharmacy is best to use. So yes, absolutely. I am new uh, learning about telehealth, telemedicine. When choosing an Advantage plan, should I ask if this is included? Yes, so the telehealth, um, you know, we're all new to telehealth. We're doing a lot of virtual appointments. 
If you were seeing a physician where you normally would, uh, it would go through your insurance, yes, so Medicare um, is covering telehealth uh, just like they would cover a in-person visit. So if you, whatever you would normally pay, if you had a copay or if it was free, it's gonna be exactly the same with the telehealth. Okay, and our last question. If I make the change back to my original plan after January 1st, 2021, do I have to wait till July 1st to be on the original plan? Hmm. Okay, if you make a change, to like during open enrollment, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, right? Is that what you're talking, the, the person's talking about? Yes. And uh, they make a change between January and March. They want to go back. To they their... want to go back. No, it, it would happen. So if they made that change like January 15th, it would start in February. That other, the other one is where I was talking about when you first sign up for Medicare. All okay, right. well, this concludes our program. Thank you, Christy, for your expertise, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's event will be available on our Facebook page, and we look forward to hosting more Facebook Live events in the future. Thank you. Thank you.